Hi, everybody. How are you? I don't have any uh, prepared remarks, so what I'm thinking of, what I thought of doing driving over is giving us an opportunity together uh, to focus on our relationship with Christ and the Father and how we know God, how we actually do we know Jesus, asking ourselves that question. Um, there can be a thing when our emphasis is on religion, something that occurs is um, we can decide that Jesus is unreasonable or that the Father has expectations of us that we really can't manage. And this contributes to uh, having a stormy relationship with God that has nothing to do with God. That it's not really God we're relating to, it's a notion of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we want to give that a little bit of thought. So I wonder uh, if sometimes we're not praying at God. Even if we're doing adoration sometimes, we might go into a chapel and sit down and do our thing. Uh, maybe it's uh, a rosary and then reading and... Um, I often, as a young mother, had a diaper bag that was full of so many things I couldn't possibly use them all. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. To the mothers it does. Some people, sometimes we, go into adoration similarly. You know, as though the worst might happen and we might get bored and have to just sit and be in the presence of Christ. I believe in my heart with certainty that Jesus craves to be known. Have you ever had an experience where you were in the presence of people or a person and they had no interest in knowing you? They related to you as though they knew everything they needed to know about you. And that was enough. And so they would relate to you in a way that actually felt where you, were, you remained unseen, and unknown. Wow. Someone is having more fun than us. <laughs> so it's, I, I, I could say boy racers, but that would be prejudicial. Perhaps it's a girl racer, although we've never seen it, have we? Uh, okay, so one of the m most hurtful things for Christ has to be that we, the people who seek to follow him, don't seek to know him. In a sense, we could be relating to Christ sometimes as like that a historical figure. Well, we've read about him. Here's what we know. Um, these are the facts. Here's where we got them. Here's our theological understanding, which we have deepened. And yet that man, who was God, who died so that we could feel good about ourselves, remains unknown to us. I think each day there must be time, 10 minutes, where we sit in silence with the goal of allowing Jesus to be seen, to be known by us. If we are too busy in our prayer life to know Jesus, then we're too busy in our prayer life. Um, so discernment is of critical importance for us at certain times in our lives, yes? Yes. Um, discernment is really, we teach the teenagers that discernment is a decision made over time with prayer. Now, if we don't know Jesus, if we don't get that feeling of, okay, now I know I'm in the presence of Christ because I'm resonating differently. I'm calmer. <sighs> Maybe a big sigh comes through me. Um, the busyness of the mind pauses. Does it sound familiar? Yeah, all of a sudden, what's a big deal seems like, well, Maybe not so much of a big deal. 
That's kind of knowing Jesus. So if you can get to that in prayer, you are best equipped to discern things. When you're feeling that way, that's when you want to examine decisions. That's when you want to decide important matters in your life. The Lord wants to be seen, my friends. The Lord wants to be known by you. It will change how you live, how you think, how you relate to other people, how you pray. It will change how you die and how you um, approach death in a great way. Uh, when we don't know Jesus, we are lonely in a place. And loneliness becomes very, uh, what's the word, acute if we don't know Jesus. I once did a, everybody was complaining about feeling lonely. Or what were they saying? Oh, if I was married, I wouldn't be lonely. Oh, if I was married to someone I liked, I wouldn't be lonely. Oh, if, um, if I was in this vocation, I would feel fulfilled. Oh, if only I'd been a priest. Oh, if only I hadn't been a priest. I thought, boy, we are all feeling this, this thing. We're all feeling we'd be happier somewhere else at a different time with someone different. So I kind of did a thing where I said, I took a survey. How many here don't, don't answer this question? I know the answer. I don't need to see your hands. How many here, I asked, have experienced loneliness in the past <coughs> month? And everyone put their hand up, as I knew that they would. Loneliness is the human condition. It can feel more or less painful at given times, times of distress, um, whatever, when it, it cranks up. But everyone experiences loneliness. If you know Christ, if you have taken the time to know Christ and see him, your loneliness is manageable, and it is full of opportunity for growing in relationship with God. So if you're feeling these feelings of loneliness like unseen by human humanity, unknown by other people, unrecognized by those around you, it means you're one of us. You're still here. Okay, it's a condition we share. To be present and remain unknown is a terrible cross. And it was the experience of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I would put to you that he experiences that still in many churches and tabernacles right now. People are religious, but they really don't want to know too much about him because it means they would have to change. Change their thinking, change their decisions about other people, their judgments. A lot of people get caught up on the externals of our religion, and they don't they don't make their way through the externals. Making your way through the externals of our religion is like, you know, walking through some bushes to get to the path. It's not about the externals. Trust me. It is about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, that is where the, 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 the dynamic change takes place in you and in the world. If you see people who know Jesus, very often they're silent before they speak, yes? Right? They're not doing a lot of this. They're holding back. They're like, hmm, okay, I'm thinking. I'm contemplating. I'm trying to grab Christ from inside me and see what he thinks about this circumstance, how I can help or how I can determine what's going on. Um, when we focus on the externals, my friends, that is when we present a 1950s church to a contemporary population who just don't even know what we're talking about, right? They're thinking, you're, you're still doing that? Why? I don't even get that. And the, the thing is that often we don't either. Okay. So when we know Christ, we become less sure of ourselves. We become less certain about everything. We can't know. We know Christ, so we know that he has the fullness of wisdom and knowledge, and, and we don't. So when we know Christ, we are less certain about everything. We are willing to wonder with people. <clears throat> We're willing to sit in a condition of 
uncertainty, wondering with the people around us. There's nothing more attractive than a person who will sit with you and wonder about something. We mothers could do with more of it, I think. When we encounter our children, often we feel like, okay, how am I going to fix you? <laughs> and what we should be doing is be more willing to sit next to our children and wonder with them what the big questions even are, never mind the answers for them. So my friends, that's all I have to say to you tonight. I, I think if tonight we could, um, we could decide upon a new stillness in our prayer and determine that we will take 10 minutes a day sitting, standing, still, resting with the goal of seeing Christ, allowing Jesus to be seen by us, I promise you, Jesus will not refuse you intimacy. It's his greatest wish. It's what he wants most. So if you show up, Christ will be there and allow you to be seen by him, allow himself to be seen by you. And he certainly sees you. He's not one of us walking past you, either ignoring you or pretending to love you, but actually not taking the time to do it. You know, this is what we do. Um, let's ask a question. Let's just pray. I'll just do a small exercise, and then maybe we will <coughs> hand out the sheets. Um, so in the interest of examining our relationship with God the Father, let's close our eyes if we're comfortable, and let's each think of one word that best describes our relationship with God the Father. Okay, we open our eyes, as abrupt as that feels and, and unkind, because it's not something you think about, it drops down or it doesn't in this exercise. Um, now, some of you will have said, God the Father, okay, okay, constant, comfortable, relaxed, uh, intimate, um, you know, Whatever. Some of you will have said, uh, nothing comes to mind. And some of you will have said, scary, troubling, uncertainty. Some will have positive, some will have negative, some will be like, I don't understand the exercise. No problem. That's no problem. Now, I'm going to ask you to do it differently. Let's close our eyes again. And let's ask ourselves, what is one word that we wish described our relationship with God the Father more than any, we, anything? We wish our relationship with God the Father was like this. Okay, we'll open our eyes. Now, how many got a word that time? Hands up. Something come to your mind, what you wish it was like? Okay, now let me, let me suggest to you that what came to your mind was what God wanted. That the Holy Spirit communicated to you possibly what the Father in Heaven wished your relationship was like together. You might have thought trusting, happy, exciting, wonderful, kind, whatever, you know? I think that's probably what the Father wishes your relationship with him looked like. Okay? Everyone okay? Yes? All right.